Hey everybody, in this video we're going to go over logging in using SSH keys. Now this is a little bit more secure, so that's why it would be recommended. And it's pretty simple to do, and it's also useful for giving access remotely to, say, some other company. Because all they would have to do is send you their public key, which is as in the name, it's public, so it doesn't really matter. It doesn't cause any security issue by them sending that to you in email. They could just send that to you. You add it to your server in the authorized keys file, which I'll show you where that is. But let's let's first start by generating. So right now I'm on my Docker container here. So I'm not connected to the Rocky Linux server. So Here's what we do. We first would generate a key pair. Now there may be a key pair already, but we're going to generate one because I don't think there is one. So it's going to ask us where we want to save it. Now we're running as root, so it's going to save it in root, the hidden folder, dot SSH, ID, RSA, and that's fine. I'm not going to have a passphrase, and that's that. So now, whoops, now if we go in to dot SSH. And now you can see we have a private key. That's this one. And a public key. That's this one with the dot pub. So we never, the private key never leaves our server. It's always going to be right here on this server. So that's fine. We protect that. That has to be protected. The private key cannot be shown to anyone. It should always be kept private. Now the public key, on the other hand, that can be given to anybody. Really, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't cause any issues. So let's, let's do this. Now we want to get this public key over to our Rocky Linux server. So so there's a couple ways we can do that. We can FCP it over there, or we can use this SSH copy ID. Let's see if this is SSH copy ID, this command. And what we can do is Chris R at and the remote host. So that's going to be 10.10.200.90. And we hit enter and here's what it's going to do. It's going to log in with the new keys to filter out that way that are already installed. One key has to be installed. If you're prompted now, it is to install the new keys. So this is going to actually copy that public key onto the right place on Rocky Linux. So I'll just put in my, my password. Okay, so now, now we're going to log back into SSH Chris R, and we're just going to make sure it copied the files correctly. 10.10.200.90. Now, did you see what just happened there? I didn't even have to put a password in because it used private public key access, right? So because I have, I have that, that private key, it was able to authenticate me. And the reason it can do that is because if we look in here, dot SSH, so PWD home, Chris R dot SSH. So that's where you're going to put it, the user's home directory. And that's generally going to be home Chris R. If it was root, it would be the slash root. But in this case, it's going to be in here in a file called authorized keys. And if we do a app authorized keys, there you see it. And if I exit, I'm going to exit out. I close the connection. I'm still in. Here. And if I do 
at ID RSA. Well, that's my private key. If I do cat ID RSA dot pub, the public key, what you'll notice is that's the same key. So putting the public key into, let's go back. I'm connected. See, that's nice. I don't even have to hit anything. So CD dot SSH hidden file, hidden folder, hidden directory, authorized keys. I can do a, I can add authorized keys in here. And any authorized keys, public one, will allow me to log in without using a password. Now, to use this private key, if I put a passphrase on it, which I could to keep it more secure, then it would prompt me for that password that I put on the private key. But since the private key is pretty safe over here, I didn't put one on. So if someone stole this private key though, they could log in as this user. So that's why you've got to keep the private key safe. So that SSH-copy-ID tool just makes that super, super easy. Now you can, of course, manually, you can grab that public key. If someone sends that in an email, you could grab that and put it into the same authorized keys for that user and allow them to, to log in like that. So, I mean, that's the basics of uh, allowing login through private public keys. And it's, it's nice and it's super secure and a little bit better than passwords. So give it a try. Thanks for watching.